All right, I'm going to say something to everyone. Uh, I did a 40-minute video, and it came out horrible. So I'm going to see if I can do this again. Uh, as I was on my way home, I was uh, compelled to make this video in regards to a conversation that I had. Uh, we were talking about, it was a very uh, civilized conversation. You know, there was no debates going on. Uh, this person that I talked to is a very wise person and is not debated at all. Uh, but I noticed it kind of it gave me an idea on how we are as people very debative. We're talking about the history and who we are and, you know, trying to figure out what tribe we're from, from and things of that nature. And and it kind of led me to thoughts on how I've seen other videos on how our people will be arguing and I'm from this tribe and we're these people and we're this and, you know, you know to hell with the white man and white man is the devil and all this garbage that I hear that's ignorant as ever. Um, and I wanted to kind of look, kind of like go into some scriptures based on how we should be as disciples of Christ. All right. So the first thing we need to realize is Christ is the way, the truth and the life. No man come unto to the father except by him. So let's go to first Peter chapter two, verse 21. All right. First Peter 2 verse 21 says, For he, even unto us, excuse me, for even hereunto ye were called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his footstep, that ye should follow his footsteps, follow his footsteps. And I'm going to say it that way clear, because a lot of us are not following Christ's footsteps. Christ never cursed anyone out, because a lot of these, our brothers that, sisters, you don't really hear our sisters, some sisters got more sense seems like these days than some of our brothers but anyway a lot of these brothers that be on the street preaching that the white man is the devil and all that they're going to be put to death and they be you that's not the gospel period you don't hear christ nowhere in scripture saying or putting down another nation nowhere there's no scripture like that so when you read in second peter chapter 2 verse 20 first peter 2 verse 21 we are supposed to follow Christ's footsteps. Let's read verse 22. This is how you understand the gospel. Who did no sin, neither was guile, guile, guile found in, in his mouth. Now, let's go to uh, Titus. Give me a minute here. Let's go to Titus. chapter 3 I think yeah Titus chapter 3 verse 1 put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers so the most what, what, what Paul is saying here to Titus he says put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers put things in your mind to understand certain principalities and powers to obey magistrates to be ready to do every good work this is not talking about the government, okay? This is talking about the elders of the church. People think that this scripture is talking about some government. Nah, not this government. Nine, Job 9.24, the earth has been given into the hands of the wicked. So this scripture is not talking about being subjective to a government that's evil. That's rightly divided truth. That's total ignorance. Put them in mind to be subject to the principalities and powers, to obey magistrates, to be ready to to every good work, to speak evil of no man, to be no brawler. So when you hear people say the white man is going to be put to death, ping, right, light bulb. Even though, let's say a lot of the things they're saying is true, but we don't know which white man will be put to death. We don't know exactly which person. So when you see a person walking past and you say, you're going to be put to death, boom, you just pass judgment on that person. You can't do that. Um, yeah, to speak evil of no man, to be no brawlers, but gentle, showing all meekness unto all men. Meekness unto all men. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish. For we ourselves were sometimes silly and doing dumb stuff. Disobedient, deceived, 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 which means under the Christian doctrine. Serving 
diverse lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. We used to do these things, but what did Christ do to us? You notice you can still decipher those that are in Christ and those that are not in these days. When you hear that mess on the streets, and it get publicized a lot because a lot of people would get, that would get views all day because people like to hear negative, you know, that negative energy. Now, like I said, the brothers, some of them do understand exactly what they're talking about when it comes down to the history, but they got so much knowledge of it, it built a fire within them, and they don't know what to do with it, so they just blurt out a bunch of stuff that's not according to wisdom, Proverbs one verse six and seven. All right, so let's go to uh. Matthew chapter 5 real quick and hopefully this video will come out correctly. Matthew chapter 5. Alright. I'm going to start at the 13th verse. Ye are the salt of the earth. Now, we're going to find out who are the salt of the earth. Now, I've done this before. You got last and salt. The first shall be last, and the last shall be first. So we understand that Christ have chosen his disciples. There's a seed chosen. They are considered the salt, but something happened to us. So that's why we are considered last right now. Let me watch. You are the, and if you scramble the word salt, you'll get the word last. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost its savior, which means potency, flavor, wherewith shall it be salted? So wherewith? What, 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 just, you lost everything. You lost your identity. So what can you do now to help anybody? You're not a light right now. That's what it's in. It is hence, thence, I mean, it is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. To understand this scripture right here, this key scripture. Let's go to Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. And it says, And ye shall bring forth a son. She, excuse me, shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name. And I'm going to just say Jesus. For he shall save his people. And he shall save, for he shall save his people. For he shall save his people from their sins. His people. Now you got to understand how Christ was prophesied in the Old Testament, but I'll get that. I'll show you that in a minute. Then it says, Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, The prophet is Isaiah, which is Isaiah 7, verse 14. Verse 23, it says, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Let's go to Isaiah 7, verse 14. Isaiah 7 and 14. And hold Matthew's 5. I'm about to go back there. Isaiah 7 verse 14. And it says, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. This is, the, this is Christ's star that was seen in the east. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. So you understand that the scripture links in to Matthew chapter 1 verses 21 through 23. So what I wanted to show in Matthew 5, verse 13, you are the salt of the earth. There's a specific people that are giving the earth salt. That's keeping everything together now. That's Revelation chapter 7, when it talks of the 12 tribes of Israel and the four angels are holding the winds because of these people, because they have to be marked on their forehead, which represents some people may balk on this, the pineal gland. That's what the world calls it. But that's where the mark of on their forehead represents the golden bowl is their brain where the Holy Spirit resides, the temple. Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost its savior, wherewith shall it be salted? It is hence, thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and be trodden under foot of men. Now, I'm going to read, I read again for a reason. How are we trodden under foot? Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 48. Deuteronomy 28, verse 48. Therefore, shall thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things, and he shall put a yoke of iron. When it says, and he 
the Most High will set up a nation to put a yoke of iron on your neck until he have destroyed thee. The Lord shall bring a nation. See, this is where our people be going off, talking about the white man and the devil and all that. First of all, that is not up to us to call any man a devil because we were devils first because we broke the law, statutes, and commandments. So what the Most High is doing is allowing the other nations to put a yoke of iron upon our neck. The Lord shall bring, do you see, it says the Lord shall bring a nation against thee from afar, from the end of the earth, as a, as swift as the eagle. Yeah, any nation that, that prays the eagle, that has an eagle as an emblem, is they're the ones that's set up in Psalms chapter 83 today to conspire against us. Swift as the eagle flies, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. Okay, we understand Hebrew. We didn't understand English and all these other languages. All right, now let's go back to Matthew chapter five, and I must read the fifteenth verse. Verse: Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine. So there's a there's a responsibility on how you're going to have to light let this light shine. How can you let a light shine when you lost your safe or your potency? Okay. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good work. So people be saying, man, you just putting up videos or whatever, just to be seen and you just want popularity. And, you know, nah, nah, I'm not doing this. This, the, the most high is, is, is allowing me and giving me the utterance of what to speak to, to the public, not me, because I'd rather be watching some you know some videos about cars and I'm hungry I read I want to eat right now I could have just stopped this video because I've done it twice because the computer is not acting right because it's not me I can be like you know what forget this forget it no nah, the most high let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father which is in heaven so the head that the, the, the glory the most high gets the glory for let now light shine. Think not that I come to destroy the law. Think not. Christ is saying something big here because you got Christian doctrines right now that say you can eat whatever you want. Right? Think not that I come to destroy the law. Let your light shine. How are you going to do that? We got to follow the scriptures. Not follow Constantine at 325 AD when he set up the, 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 the Nicene Creed and we're following that pagan custom. Not us or me. But well, some of us are following the pagan customs that was passed down. Think not that I come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. How do you fulfill something? Christ is fulfilling. Isaiah 53. He was going to come. Let's read it. Isaiah 53. And I'm going to start at the, I'm just going to read verse, verse 7. Because like I said, the computer is not acting right. I don't know what's wrong with it. It's all good. Isaiah 53. I've, uh, verse 7. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, as and as a sheep before her shears is dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off. Out of the land of the living for the transgression of my people was he stricken. The transgression, which means he died for our transgressions of the law. Because of sins. To break the law, you, you have to transgress the, the law. That's a sin. All right. Um, so when it says, think not that I come to destroy the law of the prophets, he didn't come to undo what the prophets did or the law itself. That don't make sense. Or or the prophets, I have not come to destroy, but to fulfill. That's what I read there. He's fulfilling what was written about him in, in the Old Covenant. And there's more scriptures, but I'm trying to condense this so the same work like it got some sense. All right, let's go to, um, let's go to, uh, matter of fact, I'm going to break this down because some people have been kind of like uh, not understanding exactly what it says. Let's go to verse 19 of the same line of scripture. 
says, Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. What this saying is, if you got a Christian doctrine right now that's teaching man that they can eat whatever they want and you don't have to follow the old covenant, some of those people in that church will wake up, just a few, least, will wake up. Just like I was in it. But they were teaching there, we could eat ham hocks and all this mess. Right? And out of 100 people, maybe three or four. That's what that's talking about. And shall teach men, so he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Great in this manner is, at old quick, it's English, it's talking about in number. Because if you teach your cho your church, your children too, because I was going to say that, your church, that they are supposed to keep the commandments and believe in Christ. And remember, the dragon is wroth with the woman in, in Revelation chapter 12. Because of that, that's how you understand the true doctrine. Believe in Christ and have the testimony. I mean, believe believe in Christ and keep the law, keep the law, have the testimony of Christ. That's what Satan is looking for. That's what Satan is looking for. You have a greater number. That's what that's talking about. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter the kingdom of heaven. This is talking about the Pharisees and scribes did not believe in Christ. So what's going to happen is, because some people say, man, shoot, you see how it's talking about the Pharisees and scribes? We don't have to follow the law. They don't know what they're talking about. To understand what the scripture is saying, you got to go to Matthew chapter 23. All right, because Christ is speaking these words. For I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. How can your righteousness exceed? I'm going to show you. Let's go to Matthew 23. And hold Matthew 5. I'm going to go back there. Matthew 23, verse 1. Then spake Christ to the multitude and to the disciples, saying, The scribes and Pharisees sit on Moses' seat. So they knew the law, basically. Because Moses was given the Ten Commandments and the laws and the statutes. Um, he was the first person that was given that, all right, based on uh, Mount Sinai. And he, you know, the thunder came and, you know, he was under the presence of the Most High. And that's why his head was white as snow. All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do. So Christ, out of his own mouth, is saying, All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, because they are telling them what to do based on the law. So your righteousness have to exceed that. And I'm going to show you how in a minute. That observe and do, but do not ye after their works, for they say do not. So they are going to say certain things about the law, but they're not going to follow it themselves. So they say and do not. So Christ is actually telling you to follow the law, but you have to believe in me too, because he's the way. So that's how your righteousness exceed from the, you know, exceed uh, the Pharisees and the scribes. You have to exceed them because they don't know what they're talking about, basically, because they were following the Old Testament and, and not uh, they, you know, they were they were disrespecting Christians and things of that nature. Christ, like people, is Christian in Scripture. Christ did not follow his birthday. Christ did not set up any Christmas trees. He didn't put a he didn't put a a pyramid on top of his head. One of those happy birthday hats that people be putting on there. He wasn't blowing out those little dumb things that come out and it comes out like a snake's tongue. Yeah, a lot of people don't know that ritual. Those are different rituals that you follow. Okay, but I only want to turn into that. I may go into that one day. All right, so I wanted to kind of like do this real quick because I don't know what's going on with this computer. Um, so let's go to um, Matthew 5. I'm going to go back there real quick. This is actually supposed to have been a small video. All right, um, see, this is the basic information. I wanted to show something about this, the, the basics, because, of course, we can learn about the you know, the 12 tribes, is you know, who we are as, as people, the 12 tribes and 
um, our heritage and, you know, certain secret rituals and certain things that I'm getting into and understanding. Um, so I, I want to make this very clear. Um, I was not jumping on a brother that actually t just him based on just jumping on him on, uh, you know, the comment that he made. I just wanted to make sure that he understood and others because I get certain emails. Others, others know that um, we need to know Satan's devices. All right. So when it comes down to it, based on Christ himself, um, I want to show something. I'm looking for the scripture now. Give me a minute here. Uh, Matthew chapter 5. Make sure this thing working right. Matthew chapter 5 real quick. Let's go to uh, verse 38. Matthew chapter 5 verse 38. And it says, Ye have heard that it hath been said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you that ye resist not evil, but whosoever, whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, turn to him the other. And if any man will sue thee at the law and take away thy coat, let him have thy cloak also. So remember that uh, 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 21 speaks about following Christ's footsteps. Christ never beat nobody up. The, the only thing he did by anger which, and he didn't sin, was turn over the tables in the temple. They were selling items and, and you know, dealing with selling items in the, in the temple. You don't supposed to do that. In Solomon's temple, too, poor man, that shows that he had respect for the, the brothers and, and sisters of the old covenant. He never broke it. He never came to undo any of the Old Testament scriptures. All right, let's go to verse... 44, but I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you, that ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. You see where the children of your Father which is in heaven? In Matthew 5, the first uh, verse 13, ye are the salt of the earth. He's prompting us to be the children of the Most High. But we had, he set the example. Right, but I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you, that ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. For if ye love them which love you, what reward have ye? So it's easy to love. What is that? What kind of reward? That is, that is your reward. You just love those who love you. All right. For if you love them which love, which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans same? And if ye salute your brethren only, what do more than others? Do not even the publicans so? Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Even as your, heaven, your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Even. That means you got to be like Christ. And Christ is like the Father. So that's why you see the Father saying we need to be like him. He always told his people to be like him. Be ye holy, for I am holy. You know, you know why? Because he, I'm going to read this, Deuteronomy 7, verse 6. That's why we've fallen so low as people, because we don't understand that we are the actual bloodline of the creator. We're the bloodline, people. Every nation need to know that. But this doctrine that I'm pushing is based on the gospel and the other nations are included. But you got to receive the people. Deuteronomy 7 and 6. For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. Holy. Holy. The Holy Spirit. The Rawak. Brief breath into Adam to have the seed that you're looking, that you're, that you're reading about. For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God have chosen thee to be a special people unto himself, unto himself, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. That's why when you read Matthew 5, verse 13, ye are the salt 
You're the one that give the earth flavor. That's why in Revelation 7, the angels are holding back the four winds until the servants of the Most High is sealed. The 12 tribes of Israel. All right, let's go to Romans. This is the last scripture I want to go to. Hopefully, hopefully I wasn't all over the place in this, in this actual video. Like I said, I had to do this a few times, but I don't know what's wrong with this computer. Be tripping. Uh, Romans chapter 1. I think it's around the 14th verse. Um, I'm going to read the 16th verse. Yeah, 16. Romans chapter 1, verse 16. This says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. It is to everyone that believeth. But there is an issue here to the Jew first. So Christ set up Jews, the 12, the 12 disciples were all Jews. And also to the Greek. That means to every other nation, Greek can represent Gentile and the Greek because he was in Rome. Paul was in Rome. So you have Grecians there in Rome. Greece. That's Europe. So you got to realize that He's not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. At first, Christ, he had to state that because he was actually a, a disciple killer. Because before we were called Christian, we were called disciples. We were called Christians in Antioch. So, based on what we're reading here, it salvation is to the Jew first. And then the Jews would teach the Greeks or the Gentiles. But that's where they're going off in the Christian doctrine. That doctrine is set up by Satan himself. Period, man. You're supposed to identify the people. People say, well, it ain't got nothing to do with tribes. Yeah, okay, keep thinking it. That's why there's earthquakes going all over the place. You keep saying that. Keep on thinking that. Keep on. You, you, people be wondering why it's so much evil because you're disrespecting the people. See, the people are starting to rise. And certain day, every time every generation rise and gets strong, getting more knowledge, the earth is going to crumble. More winds, more destruction, more tornadoes because that's what this earth the end of this earth as you see it will be straight total destruction because of these people. The whole earth is out of course because of these people. So what happens is once these people start to rise, we it's like you got Satan's foundation on this earth now. Because it's, remember that his his seed under Job verse nine, you know, nine verse twenty four, I always like to quote that because that's uh, the direction that my ministry is going towards right now because we know what's going on. We, I mean, we got an unexpected tornado that hit in Alexandria about two weeks ago. Come on, man. They manipulating weather. The Most High is allowing Satan to have that type of technology out there in the forefront to manipulate the weather. He, he's going to allow Satan to do certain things. So every time a person of us rise, Certain things are going to happen. Period. It is about the tribes. Because these tribes are the only people that's going to teach you the book. Let's go to Isaiah 49 and 6. And he said, It is a light thing, brightness. Ye are the light of the world. Right? I mean, hold up, man. I ain't trying to make this video long because I know how this computer going. But let's go back to Matthew 5 real quick. Because certain things need to be reiterated. Matthew chapter 5, verse 13. Ye are the salt of the earth. Matter of fact, let's go to verse 14. Verse 14. Ye are the light of the world. Now, I'm going to stop right there. I know that's a little unethical, but I have to do it this way. And ver uh, Isaiah 49 and 6. And he said, it is a light thing. Light. Not light like, you know, it's not that much. It's. You know, you don't have to be too elaborate, just a little bit light. No, they talking about that. It is a light thing that thou should be my servants to raise up the tribes of Jacob, to raise up the tribes of Jacob. Who is he talking to? The title of this is Israel, the Lord's servants. He's talking about he's talking to his people. And he said, it is a light thing that thou should be my servants to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserve of Israel. I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles, 
of course that's going to happen that's what Paul ministry is about that thou may have be my salvation unto the end of the earth now how do we understand that it says and to restore the preserve of Israel how we how how is this going to take place now let me finish reading what I was reading here what was I reading verse 13 Matthews 5 and 13 of uh, 14 excuse me you are the light of the world a city that is set on a hill cannot be hid you are the light ye He's talking about the disciples He's talking about his people Matthews 24 his elect all right um let's go to Matthews 1 verse 21 and she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. I'm going to just use that for right now. For he shall save his people from their sins. Save his people from their sins. Let's go to Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16. I didn't want to take this route because I get tired of hearing the ignorance about it don't matter about tribes and all that. Now you don't know what you're talking about. Give me a minute here. Uh, I'm going to go to verse 14 Mark chapter 16 verse 14 afterwards he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat and umbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen and he said unto them, unto them the commission of the eleven right now, we understand eventually, because some people don't think that, oh, you know, because Paul was considered a disciple or an apostle. Because if you're a disciple of the Most High or, or Christ, you are an apostle. Based on they seen Paul, I mean, Christ himself. Paul seen Christ when he was thrown off the horse. So that's why it says 11 here. Paul is the next, the next apostle that will take the place of Judas Iscariot. After he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat and unbraided them with their unbelief and hardened, hardness of heart because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Go ye into all the world. But who did he set up to do that? These eleven. Then he set up Paul because Paul, he knew how fervent and powerful Paul was. So he, because Paul had, he's bilingual. He, you know, more than that, he, he had. He knew a lot of languages and he knew how to talk to those who were just following the law. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Okay, so I wanted to show that he set up 11 to 12 disciples are leaders. 12, you got 12 months in a year. That's the most high deal with 12. Why? I have no clue. I have no clue. The only thing, and I can't just give my opinion, so I only want to give you my idea why, because that's philosophical. Twelve tribes of Israel. Okay? Matthew's 24. Matthew's 24. Give me a minute here. Matthew 24, verse 22. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. The Most High is shortening, shortening the days for his elect. It ain't talking about every other nation right here. It's talking about his people. He always chose a people. Okay? The second Edgeris chapter 6, uh, verse 54. 5 and 56 I believe chapter 6 verse 54 to 57 or 56 y'all can read that on your own time so I have to go because I don't know how long this computer will be acting crazy so there you have it I just wanted to put that kind of like basic lesson up that we have to follow Christ's footsteps love your enemies of course love those who hate who persecute you uh, a lot of us don't see that we're watching videos I'm watching videos about people cursing the white man out and all that garbage man nah that's the wrong spirit that's not of Christ alright 
um, you have to read Titus chapter 3 to go into that information and say that you have to be no brawler and speak no evil of no man. All right. There you have it. Um, I'll be making more videos. I want to bring out something in reference to class. I was going to get into um, a big pamphlet. It's not panning out the way I want it. So I'm just going to start class in two weeks. Um, it's going to be uh, because I was feeling to the point where I'll be limiting people's uh, learning abilities like pamphlets and things of that nature. It's okay, but when it comes down to scripture, this is the pamphlet. How can I limit someone based on a pamphlet? Or how can I grade someone? This is not a, a regular vocation on, uh, you know, a carnal school set up by the government, you know, and that, some institution. So I, I want to make sure that, because some people just, ooh, I, I want to get a good grade, so they just study basic scriptures on this. No, I'm going to set up where we go into scriptures and we we you just gonna follow it'll be easier that way you can learn faster okay there you have it um i'll be making more videos of course this is my life and i'll be doing this for the rest of it Shalom.